Amazon has redefined consumption and is serving entertainment on a platter to its customers. It provides an assortment of products where the customers are simply spoiled for choice. From movies to music, Kindle to TV shows, Amazon knows exactly how to create the need and how to cater to those needs. With the company's accelerating growth rate, 19%, 20%, and 28% in 2014, 2015, and 2016 respectively, it is not only taking away sales from the physical shops, but also taking away a good portion of the market share from traditional retailers. For retail businesses, Amazon is one of the greatest threats. Several physical stores have been shut down in the face of the company's unstoppable growth. Many malls have also been discontinued due to low sale figures. As a result, many youths have been laid off. Their present is shattered and their future stands indefinite. People who are facing this level of competition at its height are the ones who are employed at physical stores in shopping centers or malls. This will lead to much more traditional retailers to close down their shops and dismiss their workers. The question that arises here is why can't the people who used to work at the brick and mortar stores join Amazon? This might have seemed to be an easy alternative, but it's not. This is because Amazon will not even be needing half of those workers to sell its merchandise. Physical shops have many people employed for many different purposes. For example, a physical store might need to have floor managers, salespersons, cashiers, etc. But Amazon only requires delivery boys or pickers who would grab thousands of products every single day and travel to far off destinations to deliver those. Despite Amazon announcing that there would be an increase in the number of pickers hired, there hasn't really been that much relative to the amount of those that have been fired. The reason for this lies in the fact that the online giant stands at the front line of automated retailing. In the future, it's going to create more work in the warehouses which would be done by robots and not human beings. Amazon plans to devise flying drones for door-to-door -door package delivery. The company's idea of selling groceries has also no place for human workers as customers would check out on their own and robots will stock up the shelves successfully. More job destruction than creation According to a report of the Institute for Local Self-Reliance on the US Census data, for every $10 million in revenue, traditional retailers employ 47 workers. In the case of independent retailers, they create 57 jobs. However, Amazon only employs 14 workers for every $10 million in sales. As the company continues to grow its business and takes away market share, there occurs a decline in the number of job opportunities and not a hike. In 2012, with the expansion of its retail share spending in North America by as much as $8 billion, 27,000 jobs were lost. In December 2019, Amazon had a total of 750,000 employees. This includes full-time as well as part-time employees. The figure is low as per the standards of the retail industry, since the company hardly has an impactful store presence. A physical store has to employ a far greater number of workers to keep the business growing. Amazon does engage many third-party companies and contractors for deliveries, but these people are not actually employees of the company. It might be said that Amazon has created jobs for these people, but hiring workers on a contractual basis helps it to regulate the costs. Considering the number of stores shut down and jobs lost, the job creation at Amazon might not be very meaningful in the case of overall employment. Amazon costs the taxpayers This e-commerce company has been able to achieve its growth at a lump sum cost to the taxpayers. With its expansion, the company has requested special tax discounts and rebates. In an article published on the New Jersey website in March 2019, it stated that the company has received a whopping subsidy of $8 million to construct its Delaware warehouse. In addition to this, it had also got a $2 million grant for its expansion in Indiana, along with tax incentives worth $10 million for expanding facilities in its warehouse at Chattanooga. The e-commerce giant has been enjoying such deals apart from the huge financial advantage that it enjoys of not requiring to collect sales tax for around two decades in most parts of the country. Though this advantage is gradually seeing its end, but the loss of the billions of dollars and the sufferings of the low tool retailers can hardly be denied. Undesirable Job Conditions This giant e-commerce company is undoubtedly technologically sound, but it does not provide ideal working conditions to warehouse employees. An article published in the Seattle Times April 2012 asserts that the internal temperature at the warehouses is life-threatening and immensely high. Employees also have a back-breaking workload. Investigative journalists have visited the warehouses to acquire this kind of private information directly from the employees. 
In September 2018, Bernie Sanders, the US Senator, introduced the Stop Bezos Act. Sanders attacked the company and its owner, Jeff Bezos, for paying lesser wages and not creating safer work conditions. As a reply to this, Amazon announced in October 2018 that it would increase the minimum wage to $15 per hour. This is more than double the $7 per hour, which is the minimum federal wage. According to the Glassdoor reviews, workers at the warehouse in Chattanooga are only paid $13 per hour. This is considerably lesser than the average wage that a warehouse worker receives as reported by the Labor Department of the United States. Amazon depends on the value created by local stores. Though it encourages customers to buy goods online, the company relies heavily on the services offered by the local shops. It freely rides on the worth created by other businesses and then motivates the buyers to purchase the same products from them. This free riding has been threatening the economy to such a massive extent that soon local shops will cease to exist for showcasing new products. Resultantly, both customers as well as the manufacturers would be denied a genuine and valuable service that creates demand and sparks innovation. Thus, the retail apocalypse is inevitable. Amazon cuts on taxes. Regarding income tax, in the 2016 analysis done by the New York Times and S&P Global Market Intelligence, it was found that the company paid taxes from 2007 to 2015 at a rate of 13%, which was almost half the average rate of 26.9% for the other S&P 500 companies. By not having any physical presence or workers in several states, this e-commerce giant has also to collect lesser sales tax. Many states require the physical presence of online stores to collect sales tax. Since the company does not have its warehouses or workers in certain states, it saves on a lot by not collecting the required taxes. Amazon drains the local economies. The companies offer neither jobs nor economic benefits to the communities that it derives its revenue from. This is where it differs remarkably from local retailers. In a case study conducted by the Institute for Local Self-Reliance in 2016, it was found that approximately $45 out of every 100 spent by consumers at local shops operate within the community. This supports and encourages growth of other jobs and businesses in the United States economy. This figure in the case of the chain stores is relatively lesser and it comes to almost zero in the case of Amazon, except for a meager amount paid to delivery persons and some third-party sellers on the platform. The rest of the money that consumers spend moves out of the local economies. What is the Amazon effect? Though the phrase changes its meaning from one context to another, it usually refers to the effects of the online digital marketplace or e-commerce on the brick and mortar shops or the physical business model. The effects are derived from the changes in customer expectations, buying patterns and a novel competitive market. The global economy is withering under the domination of the Amazon effect. Amazon was responsible for around 50% of the total e-commerce sales of the United States and 5% of the combined online and offline sales in 2018. Having high profits for 11 continuous quarters and a record sale of $1.9 trillion during the 2018 holiday season, Amazon has certainly taken the global economy under its control. Some studies have proven that the huge success of Amazon has led to sudden business closures, but there exist few companies who have tackled the situation well and have been able to continue their business. Thus, the Amazon effect always keep the retail industry in a state of flux. How does the Amazon effect look like? Amazon's incredible success undeniably has an impact on retail sales. By closely observing the components of Amazon effects, one can better understand to what extent it has challenged the online shopping industry. It has essentially affected the way consumers shop their closest products online. Now purchasers can access product reviews, data and other important information about different products and then make an informed decision. Presently, online sellers depend on things like market data, selling tactics, selling algorithms and pricing strategies to serve their customers. Several retail jobs are continuously being threatened by the tremendous growth and expansion of the Amazon empire. While the number of online purchases from the company's website and the app keeps climbing, millions of jobs are lost. In an article published in the Annual Review of Economics 2016, authors David H. Orter, David Dawn, and Gordon H. Hansen have provided an estimate that Amazon can destroy even more American jobs than China. 
China exports to the United States might have cost around 2 million jobs. Also, the manufacturing jobs that were lost due to Chinese exports were concentrated in relatively few counties, but retail jobs can be found in every nook and corner of the US. Thus, the expansion of Amazon has brought about devastating effects on the US economy. According to the annual revenue report from 2016 to 2017 presented by the company, Amazon's revenue has been increasing even more than 20% per year. Though the company promises to create more than 100,000 job opportunities, this number stands meaningless without any context. What remains unsaid is that for every job that is created by this company, several other jobs are sacrificed. Amazon destroys more jobs than it creates, and this has been continuing for years. Amazon has transformed the consumption method of the Americans. It has altered the purchasing trends of its customers. Customers nowadays, instead of visiting malls and physical stores, grab their smartphones or laptops and place online orders in an instant. About half of such purchases are made through Amazon. By changing the way consumers shop, it has influenced directly or indirectly jobs, inflation and investment. It has reshaped the world of online selling and has made it increasingly difficult for traditional independent retailers to emerge as digital providers. How can retailers not succumb to the Amazon effect? The future that Jeff Bezos and his giant company want to create for America is far from the prosperity and growth of the middle class that the US government seeks. What is necessary is a radical shift from online purchase towards creating independent businesses where small scale producers and manufacturers can chart out a much more feasible growth plan for the economy. The immense influence of this e-commerce giant is here to stay for a long time and would be felt across the retail industry, more so in a post COVID-19 world. Retailers need to rebalance their mode of operations and concentrate more on analyzing data using technology and gaining adequate expertise. Traditional retailers need to face this challenge head on if they want to make a mark in the retail landscape. Physical retail is still relevant and can continue to exist only if it welcomes certain transformations and accepts evolution.